What's up, Legends, and welcome back to another Unmatched Set Overview. Today we're taking a look at the fourth and latest Marvel set for the Unmatched series for King and Country. This set features Black Widow, Black Panther, and Winter Soldier as they battle it out on the helicarrier to see who the best spy warrior is. Uh, this is another unmatched set so of course i was gonna talk about it and fortunately i was able to have been sent a review copy by restoration games so thank them for that and just keep that in mind throughout this video because they sent me the product for free and i work closely with them at like conventions and stuff i have a shirt with their logo on it so uh yeah keep all that in mind as i tell you why you should definitely get this set, uh, and make sure you form your own opinions. So yeah, I thought this would be kind of like a little set breakdown video where I'd talk about the map, I'd give a brief overview of all the characters, take a look at some of their, their cards, uh, and then as always we're going to do my first impressions videos where I go over all of the new characters' cards and just give you my thoughts on what I think about them after just a couple of plays. So yeah, stick around for this video to get kind of like the little little dabble of everything and then you can go on your specific character deep dives as you see fit and there'll be links in the description down below there's also be the, the top link in the description will be to actually purchase this product i think this set was probably going to be the most popular regardless because these are the characters that are like most mainstream all three of them are major characters in the mcu whereas in the other sets they're kind of not but now we're getting a fifth Marvel set with Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and She-Hulk. So um, the Spider-Man part of that set might just carry it past this one in terms of popularity. But uh, at least when they announced all of the uh, all of the Marvel fighters like ten years ago, uh, this was the set I think most people were anticipating more than the others, just because of the the recognition of the characters. So. Uh, the map is the Hella character, Hella character, Hella carrier, and four of the five fighters in this box are ranged. And there are some interesting things with ranged characters going on on this map. As you can see, there's three tri zones in the middle of the map, and the yellow, orange, green, and purple areas kind of uh, provide a lot of coverage uh, for range ranged fighters in terms of areas they can hit. But then there's still some areas for counterplay from melee characters, as like this blue space, this um, brownish space, and then this top kind of like control center area with the tile flooring are still interesting uh, to like kind of pockets to hide in away from ranged attacks or ranged fighters sitting in the middle of the map. There's also new scheme and item tokens as comes with all Marvel sets. There is the rocket pack, which basically just lets you teleport your fighter anywhere which is really good for making surprise attacks well i guess not surprise since you're standing on the token or just running away i know there was one game where i was a uh, winter soldier and i was here my opponent was like here and i just said all right bye and just <laughs> rocket back to the other side of the map it was like okay come come boost in and hit me uh there's the laser turret which is simple and really good deal two damage to a fighter in your zone so basically momentary glance from medusa's deck but now a laser and electromagnetic pulse pulse array all players discard two cards this can lead to some really interesting game states especially when both characters or both players have very low hands uh so interesting and and then of course there's like a Industrial Wrench, a shield-issued blaster, and a reinforced gloves for a 2-2-2 two, two, two item split. So it's like Hell's Kitchen instead of the Raft. I think the, the item spots on this map are very interesting. Kind of these two, uh, one scheme, one actual item space right next to each other. This item is in a bunch of zones. And then kind of the secondary zones of the purple and orange for the other two items. And then these schemes in particular are uh, also just interesting it provides something for the players to play around on this side of the map uh, and the laser turret especially uh, its location can kind of determine how certain characters are going to play i know if the laser turret is in this spot 
any of the ranged characters in this set are probably just going to camp it and wait for the opponent to approach and it's a lot less good if it's in this area because your opponent can avoid that as usual but i haven't even begun to think about what happens when you play with the other items from other marvel sets on this map but uh this is one of my favorite maps i think i like it more than navy pier to be sure just because i'm from chicago but is it necessarily my favorite map uh and I think the items are like just the right amount of interesting but not game breaking as like the XL slushy or the payphone can seem. So uh, really liking what I'm seeing from this set so far. Let's take a look at Black Panther. So Black Panther's whole ability revolves around his vibranium suit. This involves whenever you boost, draw one card. So this includes boosting an attack, boosting a defense, or just boosting a maneuver. You always will draw a card and replace the card in your hand that you just boosted with, which lets you be very aggressive when it comes to boosting. And it also says cards stored in your vibranium suit can only be used to boost. So Black Panther has this horizontal card that kind of just stays in play always it's his vibranium suit and when an effect lets you store a card in your vibranium suit place it here so that its boost value is showing so this is just something you keep next to your character and when you would add cards to it from your opponent's deck <laughs> uh, which we'll talk about in a second you just keep them here and you can use them to boost so black panther is all about boosting he's all about kind of taking energy from his opponent and then reflecting it right back which is very thematic he's got this awesome mini where he is lunging forward to attack the enemy and of course he has the help of his sidekick slash sister shuri shuri uh so of course black panther has a card called wakanda forever which lets him boost this card up to two times and your vibranium suit ability will let you draw a card for each card that you boost into wakanda forever so if you boost this with two cards you draw two cards back so it lets you be very aggressive put out a lot of damage while not depleting your hand size a shuri scheme is tactical remote scanning which lets you choose an opponent reveal the top two cards of their deck and store them in your vibranium suit so this basically just rips two cards away from your opponent and puts them in your suit for you to boost with later this card is this whole notion of just storing your opponent's cards in the vibranium suit is it's bonkers because those cards aren't in your opponent's discard pile so if they have recursion effects like breather or voyage home or be like water or battle hardened stops those effects and they can't get the cards back because they're not in their respective discard pile they're in your vibranium suit and just based on the boost values that your opponent has if you get a beast form or a gaze of stone or some of black widow's missions as we'll see in a second with boost values of four <laughs> that makes some of your other cards very very scary so this whole notion of boosting everything with everything including your opponent's cards makes black panther a lot of fun to play for people like me who love just going balls to the walls aggro and just throwing everything they have at their opponent we have ancestral insight which after combat if you won the combat which is pretty easy to do with a four value versatile you reveal the top card of your opponent's deck and store it in your vibranium suits so you have a lot of ways to add cards to your suit and speaking of which we have analyze and adjust which is an attack that lets you do that after combat except this is not dependent on winning the combat so black panther is always analyzing his opponents and adjusting his strategy accordingly and then we just have another card called micro wave oh sorry micro weave mesh which lets you boost your card on defense so black panther has a lot of options whether to save his vibranium suit cards to boost his attacks for big damage his defenses for big blocks or just make it up as he goes with <laughs> solid versatile options and of course you can still boost with cards in your hand as well as your vibranium suit so you always have a ton of options so this character is it seems absolutely broken. It's like, wow, you're taking your opponent's cards 
and using them against them. But I think it's relatively balanced just because his values aren't amazing. Of course, he can increase them a lot with boosting, but that does require a lot of cards. And when he's boosting, he is drawing cards, so he will deck out very quickly and reach exhaustion. And so if your opponent can kind of just run away or survive his onslaught, he won't have a lot of resources left in the late game and will probably run out of steam then. So I know this character looks really scary, but please try playing as and against him before you claim that he is <laughs> absolutely broken because I really don't think he is. Uh, speaking of broken, uh, let's take a look at Black Widow. So Black Widow being a spy is all about completing missions. So her ability is mission ready. Before drawing your starting hand, add the Moscow Protocol card to your hand. Then shuffle your deck and draw five cards. So you start with six cards in your hand instead of five. What is the Moscow Protocol, you might ask? It is a mission, which is a type of scheme that has kind of like a requirement on it. So it'll say mission, and the Moscow Protocol says an opposing fighter took damage this turn. So basically, this is a scheme that you will play when you fulfill the mission requirement. So let's say first action, you attack your opponent, you deal damage, you can play this card second action, and then you will get the check mark completed effect, which in this particular case lets you draw a card and gain an action and then acquire a new mission. We'll talk about that in a second, but basically Black Widow has five of these missions that are all one copy schemes. The Moscow Protocol starts in your hand, as you can see at the bottom of the card it says start the game with this card in your hand, and there are four other schemes slash missions hidden away in your deck, and they all have a boost value of four, which is very important. And the mission effects kind of add like a new little mini game. It's kind of like Little Red's Basket where Black Widow is playing around this kind of goal besides just like killing her opponent. She has to do it in a specific way by fulfilling these specific requirements on the missions. It's a really like neat idea that kind of adds a game within a game. And I don't think any of the missions are too difficult to complete. Uh, some of them might be just... <laughs> a tad too easy, but uh, there is a lot of counterplay involved because of how you acquire a new mission. So whenever you complete a mission, it lets you acquire a new one, and that basically lets you reveal cards. Well, it doesn't let you, it makes you. You reveal cards from the top of your deck one at a time until you reveal a new mission. You'll put that card in your hand and then put all the other revealed non-mission cards back into your deck and you'll shuffle. So your opponent will get to see what your next mission is and can kind of play around and that and try to stop you from completing it. Uh, but they also get to see a bunch of cards from your deck that they know aren't in your hand or at least weren't in your hand at that time, which I think is really interesting and it can be bad if your opponent knows that let's say you have a faint in your discard pile and you reveal the other two faints in your deck from acquiring a new mission Sinbad goes oh Black Widow's not holding any faints and can go and voyage home you so there's some interesting kind of exposing yourself that goes on there but most of the missions are pretty powerful effects after you resolve them your sidekick why well, didn't mention earlier, Maria Hill, who is the acting director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And so she has this card, which after combat lets you move each of your fighters three spaces. They can move through opposing fighters, but then you get to shuffle one scheme from your discard pile back into your deck. The only schemes you have are your missions, so you can potentially recur three missions to complete again later in the game. And some of these missions are really, really good, like the Madripoor Sanction, which if Black Widow is in her opponent's starting space, she can deal two damage to each of that opponent's fighters, regardless of where they are on the board. This is really, really good. It's like Little Reds never leave the path, but on steroids. A lot of steroids. And speaking of which, both Black Widow and Maria Hill are spies of some sort, so a lot of Black Widow's other cards revolve around kind of this, like, level of deception and kind of uh, surprising your opponent with either movement discards or things like double identity, which is kind of like under Achilles' helm. It lets you swap the fighter in combat with the other fighter. 
and things like caught in a web, which is really interesting. So three value versatile. It says during combat, cancel all after combat effects on your opponent's card. So it's not quite a feint. It doesn't happen immediately and it doesn't cancel during combat effects, but it does cancel after combat effects, which can be very interesting to have kind of like three extra cancels, but not quite. So depending on the matchup, this card will be very surprising for your opponent indeed. Overall, I think Black Widow has a really like interesting and thematic deck of being a spy and kind of double crossing and deceiving and tricking your opponent, doing sneaky little maneuvers, as Hat Chowder would say. Uh, and these missions are a really neat mechanic. Uh, I think she might be a little too strong uh, with cards like this, but of course I haven't played around with this character too much to say so. It just felt very bad in my first game when <laughs> Maria Hill brought back this card three times and Poor Bucky took 8 auto damage from the Madripoor sanction. But uh, overall, I think they they don't have a lot of health. So I think if you can just rush them down and deal hits in before they can complete their missions, you should be all right. So let's talk about the last character in this set, Winter Soldier. And Winter Soldier is personally my favorite character of the set, although I think Black Panther is a little bit more in my playstyle. Winter Soldier is a solo hero who is brainwashed. Hydra brainwashing, of course, so it's not the good kind of brainwashing. And it says, effects on Winter Soldier's cards cannot be canceled. So it's like Sherlock's ability, but <laughs> on steroids. There's a lot of steroid use in this set. This seems really good, but some of your effects you want canceled. Basically, you have this star symbol on some of your cards that represents like a bad effect, kind of like the negative side of Hydra brainwashing you into this super killing machine, is it comes at a price. So like Winter Soldier has this bionic arm. It's a two value attack, but during combat, if Winter Soldier is adjacent to the opposing fighter, the value of this card is six instead. That effect cannot be canceled. So basically, it's a printed six when you're adjacent to your opponent. Uh, but after combat, your opponent moves each of their fighters up to five spaces. So that certainly is a lot of movement. Not a good effect, but you take the good and the bad with the uh, <laughs> Hydra brainwashing. You have a five value versatile reflex memories, which is, I believe, the first purple five in the game. We've seen blue fives, we've seen red fives, but I believe this is the first purple one, which is crazy. But of course, it has the after combat effect of discard two random cards and then draw two cards. The Winter Soldier kills without remorse. It is a six value attack, but after combat, your opponent may draw a card. So at least they'll get a card back after they block your big attack. So he hits really hard, really hard, but he's got some bad, bad effects. Fortunately, deep inside the Winter Soldier, there is a boy named Bucky. He has some awareness of his former self. I don't actually know a lot about the MCU, or I should say Marvel Comics, besides what I know from the MCU, but I think I do need to watch Captain America and the Winter Soldier again before I play this character anymore, because I really like what this deck can do. Uh, a Boy Named Bucky lets you ignore any star effects on your cards for the rest of your turn. Gain one action. So basically, you can play this first action and then hit with some of your big heavy hitters that have bad effects but you ignore the bad effects. So a boy named Bucky is a really strong card considering that you have other strong cards that are good for your opponent as well. This just makes them strong and only good for you. Really interesting effect balancing just very powerful cards with pretty intense drawbacks. Uh, this card is great at taking away those drawbacks. The Winter Soldier can also reprogram, which after combat, he can choose three cards in his discard pile and shuffle them back into his deck. This is absolutely amazing top-tier recursion. It 
literally doesn't get any better than this because you're shuffling three cards from your discard pile back into your deck all at once. And remember, you're brainwashed, so this effect cannot be canceled. So I think Winter Soldier might be the easiest character to go infinite with in the entire game. Sorry, Daredevil. So <laughs> Winter Soldier is kind of like Sherlock, Bigfoot, and Daredevil all wrapped into one package, which sounds broken. Again, all of these characters sound broken, but from playing them, they don't actually feel broken, which might sound weird. But I think they all have decent enough weaknesses that their like best case scenario doesn't always happen. So overall, I haven't played a ton of games with these characters, but from what I have seen, they seem very interesting, and I really like the new mechanics that this set offers from Bucky's kind of like effects that are bad for you, but you have ways to mitigate them, but your cards are just really strong in general, to Black Panther having that vibranium suit that he can take his opponent's cards, which could be very annoying, but it's just interesting. Uh, kind of like Houdini, it's a character that revolves all around boosting. Speaking of which, if Black Panther takes Houdini's cards, it's going to get the boost effect, which... Oh boy. Uh, and Black Widow having missions, kind of that open, uh, opens up a whole new design space for what schemes can look like in the future. So uh, overall, this is a very solid set, but it, it's unmatched. All the sets are really good, and I'm it has the the baked goods seal of approval but like it it did before i had it in my hands because it's my favorite board game favorite board game series i'm going to get them all and i think you can already tell if this set's going to be for you if you like the characters if you like the game if you want to collect everything probably going to get it if you're sick of marvel well i'm going to enjoy it uh, Marvel is everywhere right now, and I'm not sick of it yet. So yeah, that is for King and Country. I will also do some more in-depth character first impressions later, uh, but my name is Baked Goods. Thank you for watching this overview of the latest Unmatched set for King and Country, and have a great rest of your day. So as always, like, subscribe, and yay!